I've been wanting to do this since ever. Today is the day we're building a rideable hovercraft, not RC, no nothing. We're gonna sit on it and hopefully fly. And we're doing that with the help of this massive electric motor and 48 inch carbon propeller. We're gonna use two of these. This combo is capable of producing 44 kilograms of thrust and that's the motor. That's insane. I designed this Infusion 360 and it's what I call a double decker. It's a bit unorthodox, but hopefully it will work really well. It's very similar to the RC version that I made a few years ago. And it worked so well that I thought, hey, maybe I could just scale this up. I used very common materials, plywood sheets and wooden dowels. Hopefully that's gonna be semi-followable for everyone else if you wanna build this. Don't go out and spend thousands of dollars on electric motors and batteries. That's just stupid. Go out and get some gas motors. Even the skirt is made from this plastic material that's uh, very common in hardware stores. So hopefully you got some to buy. Well, one issue that I'm seeing right away is the sheer size of this propeller. Other YouTubers, they are smart enough to realize that it's easier to have multiple motors distributing the inflatability of the skirt instead of just having one super-sized propeller. Now what we could do is angle it so we'll have a mount for the motor that's slightly angled like this and that would decrease the size of the propeller that way. It will be a straight death machine this. I mean the propeller is inches from my face and I'll have another propeller just inches from my back. And why did I all of a sudden convert to inches? So at this point we'll add a good number of wooden dowels going horizontally and hopefully that will build the base on which we can build everything else. This is the bottom side so it's just going to make it easier to, to line these up and cut them. This wood is more crooked than scoliosis. Oh shit. The propeller is in fact a little too big, which means we're going to have to make the inlet slightly smaller than the propeller itself. And that means that we're going to have to elevate the motor from the base, which I think is completely fine. I just made this pivot arm so that we can draw out the circle. The main base fully finished. This is the lower deck. It's gonna be cut in a significantly smaller rectangle than this rectangle. At this point, we can take these thinner wooden dowels and make a separate frame on which we can screw on the plastic from this lower deck that will go all the way up to the base. Uh, it will make more sense later. Hopefully it will also structurally make it a little more rigid because that's totally needed. That's sick. The base will be elevated about 25 centimeters from the bottom plate. Between this base and the bottom plate, we'll have the skirt. And we'll, we, we must have some holes for the air to escape from. Because the propeller is up here, I'm not sure if these holes on the bottom plate should be smaller up front and larger in the rear to let more air pass backwards as we have more weight. We'll have the motor here. I'll sit here between the death of doom. Okay, next up is to cut this in 25 centimeter standoffs. I know I've been doing this all video. I just love it too much. 
Okay, did that work? I, I don't think so. At this point, we could use the frame as the template to cut the skirt. I can finally see this hovercraft come together. And use the frame to lock the skirt in place and also act as a protector. We could then add the top base and at this point, I also decided to add LED lights inside the hole. I was then able to staple the skirt around the perimeter of the top base and also increase the diameter of the inlet. We have done good progress. The lower deck is now connected to the base. The skirt is on. I've also made the opening for the propeller larger. So now the, all there is left to do here before we can try the motor for the first time is to make the motor mount. So let's do that now. I had to reconstruct the motor mount a couple of times though, but eventually we could finally test it. We're hovering! We're hovering! Hmm. You see, I'm trying to figure out the way to construct the rear motor mount. Now, this is the bottom side, but I'm thinking of using these wooden towers to go through the entire thing. So now pretend this is the upside, the, the, the top side. I would have two of these towers that we could join with plywood and 45 degree angle braces to support the motor. We have tested the hover motor, as I call it, live on stream, and I even weighed this thing down with 50 kilograms worth of batteries, and it's still hovered, which is insane. So now we can focus on this, and I think by utilizing the reinforcements that we have scattered on the plywood, we can get this pretty solid, which clearly is key, as we try to run the front motor, the hover motor, with a motor mount that wasn't very solid, and it vibrated like crazy. So this has gotta be solid. You may ask why are the towers so offset from each other? It's a little weird, dude. Well, it's called Simon Design. Completely safe. Oh. I went out and got the most Swedish paint to ever exist. This is the red color that you would see on all the barns around Sweden. I figured we would paint this. It's a little like putting makeup on a pig, but I think it's worth it. I also got this pipe insulation that we'll use as a bumper and it locks into place by this wooden dowel that we have as a reinforcement along the entire hovercraft. And you can just put it in place and it will lock in place, which is great, totally intentional. I should get an Oscar for this shit. Okay, as you know, for the past year, I've sent numerous files to PCBWay in order to be either CNC'd or metal 3D printed. All you do is upload your file and it will provide you with a plethora of options in regards to materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing and with their instant quote feature, you'll get the pricing up front. My experience is that you'll have your new part just a week after placing the order, so check them out in the description below. Okay. Back to the video. One of those small, ordinary RC airplane servos. And here's a mid-sized. And that's what we're using. I then assembled the rudder out of playwood that I had laying around and some steel wire, but it just did not work. The, the rudder that we built didn't work at all. We're gonna have to redesign it. I think the answer lies in having a cage that lets us connect the top of the rudder. So it's connected up top and at the bottom. That's gonna make it much more rigid because now it's, yeah. So we're gonna build a cage and it's gonna add a lot of weight, but I think the end result is gonna be worth it. And, and boom, there's the cage. But the rudder is much more fixed in place. I 3D printed a few parts that lets it pivot. We're also gonna add these Depron sheets to increase the surface area of the rudder. So that's coming up next. Very sturdy. Oh, that's a lot bigger. So it will be red and black, which is scientifically proven to increase your speed by 25%. And it's even pretty strong. Like it's really strong. Oh, well, that, that's, that's much better. 
So I made the bumpers black for the 25% speed increase and placed them all along the perimeter. For them to stay in place though, I put some screws in. There are LEDs all around the perimeter and I couldn't for the life of me understand why they don't light up. I've made the connections, they should light up. Well, turns out I didn't want the foam to just blow right off again. Ah, the bumpers flew off. <laughs> So what did I do? Well, I screwed the bottom side of the foam to keep it in place. Well, turns out I have about 50 screws going right through the LED strip. But now we can finally test it, which is gonna be sick, just like I am. The only issue that I'm having is gyroscopic precession. The motor is so enormous that it's causing the entire hovercraft to yaw to the right, to the left constantly which we can offset with the rudder. However, what you also can do is mount a second motor and make one spin counterclockwise and the other one clockwise to cancel it out. But I don't see that very likely. So two of these 120 millimeter EDF fans are just gonna help to lift the rear end up as we've added a lot of weight since we made the 50 kilogram test, which oh by the way was successful. Pushing it up to 50 kilograms. But it's not likely that the hover motor would be able to support my weight as is right now. So that's why we're adding two of these. Now that's going to be in part two. In part one, we're just going to make it radio controlled. In part two, we're going to make it a little safer. We're going to add the EDF fans and we're going to do all of this live. So if you want to watch hours of this type of content, check out my live streams in the description below and hang out. It's, it's a lot of fun. Det är som att den är på öppet hav för första gången. Jag blev lite orolig att jag ska åka in i stolpen. Oj, 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 oj. Och du var orolig över att vi var tvungna att släppa den. worked way better than I expected. This is insane. It's so powerful. The gyroscopic procession to the left isn't too bad when you start going forward. Uh, the bumpers are still on. We sacrificed the LEDs, but and it's super powerful too. I haven't cranked the rear motor more than 50%, so we got plenty of power on this thing. The batteries totally died. <laughs> yeah, I just need to add some more batteries and maybe a low voltage cutout. That was the second time I ran the batteries completely dead and they are super warm. So I think uh, putting some in parallel could definitely be much better. Also, I'm just gonna leave it there for now. I'll come back later once I have charged these and put it home. Put it? What the f Okay, that's it for part one. Stay tuned for part two. And if you did enjoy watching this video, please consider clicking that thumbs up button. It just really tends to make the videos a little more popular and uh, I, I would 
appreciate it very much. So thank you very much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.